knows that Solomon is not Mr. Platt and taking full advantage of that contractor relationship because he's, he's, he's earning finances off Solomon and all the other Asiatics. Mm. And she continues, and he does nothing for you, Solomon. You are no better than a prize. You are no better than prize livestock. And then she ends her statement with the most powerful, powerful with these powerful words. So you are settling into your role as Mr. Platt. You see, because when they took Solomon. And he 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 um, acquiesced to that contract. He he it's a new role, a new identity, a totally different character, the slave character that he has to play. And Eliza tells him, "You are settling into your role as Mister Platt." So, isn't it interesting that based upon the movie, all those Asiatics who were playing so-called slaves in those character roles, that that was not their natural. They were all, they basically all knew that they were playing roles mm-hmm. and did it very well as a survival tech tactic. Right. Mm-hmm. So which means that during the time when you're talking survival tactics, it's war. That's warfare. So which means that there was war going on. So one side chose to 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 in order to survive decided that it was important to play a role become something that they were that they're not in order to survive survive what the war see so so this is very interesting because it brings up new questions for us that we have to currently analyze um um um, the whole issue of why did some of our ancestors choose to play this role as a survival tactic? Who were they fighting? Because as I stated before, a slave can't defeat an Asiatic. Only an Asiatic can defeat an Asiatic. And so we're going to get into that more as well. So those are the statements that I want to springboard from use as a springboard um, into deeper issues here. Um, but, you know, any, any questions or anything that you or anyone would like to ask before I move on? Well, you know, there is a caller that's been holding for a while. Um, I do want to bring, um, open up the line, and then I do have several questions. Um, sure. Caller 205-617, welcome to Civil Alert. Thank you for your patience. Um Please state your name, your question, your comment, and where you're calling from. Uh, my name is Carrie. I'm calling from Birmingham, Alabama. Oh, welcome, to... Carrie. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? Oh, yeah, yeah, as yeah. well. It's very well. Well, uh, great. I'm, I'm, you're, I'm enjoying your guest tonight. He's really, really good. Uh, the, the whole African story is true. That's a lie. Uh, we was brought over here in the bow of the ship. I, w- I would agree with him on that. But what I wanted to ask him is, what does, what, does, what does he think the Africa story, you know, these movies that are coming out today are nothing but us being slaves. We're slaves, and when you look at other people that are producing movies, they're producing movies where they're uh, conquering space, conquering uh, the ocean, blah, blah, blah. And our movies are constantly showing us and our children that you can't you you can't do that. It was, it's always that we're slaves and that we're broke down and that we're the help and that we're the butler, especially in these especially in these times in America today. What 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 do you how do you think that plays on the psyche of the African Amer the so called African American or Negro Negro community? Well, yeah, that's a very, very uh, excellent point, and um, uh, it's something I, I've been talking about and cognizant about because see, th- what they're doing now is trying to reprogram a new generation of our youth. You see, because the the truth has been coming out. Um, 
So, and they, they're, they're fully aware of that, you see. So, you know, back 25, 30 years ago, they still had a very strong ironclad hold on our minds and, the, and, and, and that whole color story of, of us being the slaves and us being a do, do, docile, that, that everybody defeated us and that we're weak and, and a naturally servile people. And, and, and so that, that whole um, story, cover story, was very strong. But see, just like the Prophet Noble Ali said, that the truth will come out. And it's been coming out based upon the Moorish movement in the, in the Americas, which has been foretold generations ago. And so they're fully aware of that. So what they're doing is countering. Because if you go back 20, 30 years ago, the 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 Afrocentric um, um, story about us being slaves and 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 we had this enemy, the so-called white man who did all these terrible things to us, is dead now. You see, so when the Moors information started coming out in the 90s, heavily, it it, it basically destroyed that that cover, cover story. You see, so now what they have to do is try to counter that by, and if you notice, like you said, the butler, the help, this movie here, 12 Years a Slave, and they're even bringing back roots. <laughs> they're even bringing back roots in a new uh, modern television series, Roots. They're bringing that back now. So it's, it's this backlash against what we've been putting out about the truth. And so they're trying to make sure that they can still have an iron grip on the minds of our, our children. So they're trying to reprogram, and they're bringing back the slave, same slave program to reprogram our children's minds. That's what they're doing. But they're not going to be successful. See, so these well, movies are just counter moves by them to reprogram Generation, future generation of our youth. So you don't, you don't see. Well, so how do you see that, that where that's going? How do you see where that's working? Is it, or is it working? I mean, if you look, if you look around the community, no, it's not hands, working. At, but, but, yeah, yeah. Well, see, it's not working because um, they, they, they're putting out a lot of it. You see, now, of course, it's working to to the effect that still most of our people are still under the the sorcery. Um, but you know. Um, we've been chipping away. You see, for example, like you have these articles and there's a, uh, this huge backlash against the Moors movement in the Americas. For example, the Southern Poverty Law Center put out an article uh, basically slandering us. But you got to remember, who is the Southern uh, Poverty Law Center? It's run by um, those that consider themselves Jews. And so when they have a sense that the consciousness is rising, what are they going to do? They're going to inform their other um, 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 Jews in the media about this, up the rise is happening. So then they who control media in the Hollywood movies will start countering it and that they're putting these movies out now. You see, so the, I mean, the, but the this movie, is, but the this movie is the war. Go ahead. But the movies, but the movies have been coming out all along. This, this, I mean, most of the movies that we get is Jigaboo stuff. I mean, the movie. I mean, it's not a. It's not like it stopped and and now it's coming back on. These movies have been going on. I'm just seeing as I go around the country. I'm just seeing, and and this is and this is what's weird. All everybody acts the same. Where it used to go, where if you used to go to Philadelphia, the people in Philadelphia had a, a, a way they did things. Or New York, they had a way that they did things that was opposite or, or, or different from the people in California. The people in the state of Washington, even they would have their own, whatever it was, Chicago would have their own way. They Now it's like everybody is the same. Everybody likes the same stuff. The kids act the same. This thing where the guys are walking down wearing their pants sagging, I'm asking them, well, isn't that uncomfortable? Why, why are you making life uncomfortable for yourself? And when you ask them that, they look up like, damn, this is uncomfortable. So I'm saying these movies, what I, I, I know they're programming us, but what, what extent to, to, do 
you think they're having on us where it's just making us act like total zombies? Well, I mean, that, that's always been the, the intent, and they've been successful in doing that, programming us to, to uh, a certain way. But now, if you want to talk about the trends, um, the, the whole um, uh, slave trend is a new phenomenon, recycled. Because if you go back to the late 80s, early 90s, what trend, what, type, what themes did they put out about us? Well, in the late 80s and early 90s, it was the violent drug theme. See, yeah. during that time, it wasn't the slave theme during that time. You remember New Jack City, um, um, Dead Presidents? It because that, that was the parallel with the whole hip-hop gangster um, um, hip-hop from L.A., N.W.A., right. um, and all that whole gangster trend for that programming. So they would have the movies modeled that, and so you had the violent drug movies during that time. You see, so, um, uh, and then also you'd have in the early 90s, a- along with the drug movies, you had the, um, the, the kind of infidelity type love story themes during the time early, as well in the, in the 90s. Love Jones, um, the movie with, um, what was it, um, Eddie Murphy, Martin Lawrence. Boomerang. Um, yeah. Boomerang. Mm-hmm. So, so, you, so, so the, the trends are different. So if you notice now, the trend now is not the drug violent movies. It's not the comedian movies. It's not the love story where there's, there's infidelity. It's the slave servant story. So we've got to right. ask ourselves, why is this trend happening now? Because it's based upon the consciousness rising up out of us, and we're actually saying, well, wait a second, we're not who they told, told us who we are. So that's, that's why they have to counter the, the consciousness rise with the, the slave program again. Well, cool, brother. I'm loving your program. So, Keep so up then, then work. Are, right, right, right. So this is a new trend that they're bringing back based upon the consciousness level of our, of, of, of our people. See, so, which yes. is different than in the 90s, in the late 80s. And they're fully aware of that, so they've got to counter that. And that's why the new trend is the servile-type uh, themes now that they're coming out with. And right. in addition to keeping people asleep, I see it as if they're, they're trying to produce the element of fear. So for those people that may be waking up, when they do see all of the propaganda from the media, and then just as Amani had pointed out in the scene where he was saying that what? They told Solomon, the brother told Solomon, just, you know, be quiet. Don't let them know you know how to read. Don't show them that you really know who you are and that you're a free man. So that's pretty much, I think, subliminally installing fear where right to this day, some people can know the truth about their birthright, and they may have went and talked to the elders in their family, dug up their research, and was able to pinpoint their genealogy being connected right here to North America as far back as 1790, 1780, and sometimes the late 1600s. But being that they're still kind of scared or have these doubts in their brains, they would never say that they're an Aboriginal American or that they're an Almorican or that they're a Moor. They would never, ever, ever dare say that. So I think that that also, too, is just instilling that fear to keep the program in to say, look, you better shut up. You better not try to come and proclaim and announce who you are, publish your stuff on the record and demonstrate and start teaching people more and more because I have even know of um, a story where there's a – Lady, she's been teaching the youth like from the ages of like 9 to 11 and getting them more acclimated to the truth about this hidden history, and she's been catching hell for moving in that direction. So I definitely uh, I see, you know, what both of you are saying, and Imani, I see what you're saying about how it's like it's an op. It's a structured program to suppress the consciousness rising. But Carrie... Um, I thank you for calling in. We do have another caller that's been holding, so feel free um, to press one if you have any other questions that you want to ask after we speak to everyone else. Okay, cool. Thanks for the program. Uh huh. You're welcome. Peace. Have a good night. Thank you. 